Good afternoon out there shopkeepers and do-it-yourselfers. Today we're working on a 2004 Saturn Ion driver's side CV shaft. This is exactly how I found it. The inner CV boot was the clamp was off of it and it was already peeled off of the 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 joint pod and uh, the issue with the car was that it was um, shuddering real bad and uh, let's see if I can kind of there we go uh, well I figured it was probably a tire a brake or a CV shaft I went and drove it it seemed like it handled okay but on acceleration uh, speeds above like 30 or so it you you can definitely feel that uh, that shutter and then when you let off of the accelerator the shutter would immediately go away well I've got the thing jacked up obviously got the wheel off of it and uh, I wanted to be able to you can see the the actual post of the tripod that's on the shaft inside of the bearing ring there are no bearing needle there are needle bearings in there and they're all gone so you can see that the shaft has got a lot of movement in there so we're going to take that off i've already removed the caliper and i've got it wired up onto the coil spring so it's not hanging on the hose while i've got that off i'm going to look at the the brakes the, the shoes or the pads rather they're good there's nothing wrong there but the the caliper slide pin this one here is is almost seized up this one moves pretty good so i'm going to clean it up lubricate it i've already got the upper knuckle mount bolts where it mounts to the strut the nuts are off these bolts are fastened by a link they're fastened together by a link no they're not no they're not I thought they were but they they don't go into a uh, an oblong or adjustable hole so we'll knock them out and we'll just let the uh, the knuckle come out right here and lay over and I've got the axle nut off and uh, we'll pull that loose here and roll it back and push the spindle uh, of the uh, CV shaft back in through the, the bearing hub. We'll go underneath and pop the inner tripod out of the transfer case. Not the transfer case, the transmission. That transfer case on the brain. So let's uh, get those bolts pushed out and uh, get it rocked over so we can push the axle out. I got the two bolts out right here. Everything just kind of relaxed into the position it wanted to be in. I thought these two bolts were held together by a link, but they're not. And they're uh, knurled up here on the, on the shoulder so they don't spin when you're tightening them up. But when you go to tighten them back up, you might have to put a wrench on the bolt itself. Anyway, got the bolts out and just... Uh, pried between here and here and it pop uh, come right out of the, the the slot that it goes in and uh, that's kind of why you take the caliper off because the knuckle's going to want to fall away and you'll pull on that on the hose and you don't want that to happen because that's that's hard on the hose and then when the, when that relaxed that pulled the inner joint out of the uh, or the inner uh, tripod of the shaft out of the inner joint and you can see that's not supposed to come apart like that but it's it's been that way a while these kind of make good brass knuckles you get three of them on each shaft Let, 
those two are kind of held together because they've still got uh, parts holding them. Uh, so we'll get the shaft, the spindle part, the outer tripod or the outer joint, that's what I'm trying to say, drove through the bearing hub. That was not difficult. Let me zoom back out. I don't know how that zoomed in, but got it zoomed back out. Okay, got that pushed through the the bearing hub. And uh, I believe that tripod is probably worn down quite a ways. But all of the bearings were gone. There was none that survived. There's a couple of them. I can see them laying inside there. There's a couple of them that lived. I would go down there and uh, use a pry to knock that inner joint out of the transmission. I'll use my pry bar that's got a hook on the end of it. And you can usually find some place by the cradle that you can get behind that joint. I've got a pretty good hold on it there, and then I'll see if I can do it one-handed. There it went. I got a little mess to clean up. So we'll have to top the transmission fluid off. So that circlip right there is why you have to kind of pry or pop this out of the transmission. It won't just fall out. If it does fall out, it was going to fall out anyway. But they call that a circlip because it's it's well it's round, but you see it's not a complete uh, ring. It's got a gap in it. Well, that's not a gap there. That's piece of dirt well there's the end of it right there so I find that when I'm putting these back in the best way to do it is to have those pointed down so it's going in like that and the circlip will kind of drop down a little bit but I let that be pointed downward is that the way I do it? Maybe at the top. It's been a while since I've done one of these. Leave it at the top. Leave it at the top so you got a rounded edge kind of that when it pushes in, it won't it won't catch. It'll kind of center itself. Anyway, or you can pack some grease around it so it'll hold itself center like it's in in full flotation mode anyway we'll get the new shaft and when you're handling these don't hold it in the up and down position by one of the joints because it could pull apart so always hold it by the shaft and uh, so i found my split and the circlip so i'm going to put that down where it's pointed down and uh, slide it up in there some people say put a seal in it well that's okay go ahead I'm not going to I don't have to uh, this ain't going to the moon and it probably won't run much longer anyway Get it to the point where you can't push it in any further. And then just use the shaft to push it in. It went in. Spin your nut off. And kind of push in. And rock the spindle toward the bearing hub hole. And now I'm going to have to rotate that uh, strut around. I'm going to kind of have to work against the pressure of that uh, sway bar link to get that to come around. And uh, we'll get this, the knuckle, 
ear lined up in the slot in the strut and get a, a bolt put in it or a punch to line it. Now once you get it pulled around there, you like I say, put a, a line punch or a screwdriver shank or big nail or if you got enough strength, hold that up, line it up, put a bolt in it. But I was having a little wrestle with it, so I just stuck a punch in it. I can get my breath. I'm not a young guy anymore. And I'll line that up and put a bolt in the bottom. Get the nut on the spindle. Okay, I got him. Got him in. And the knurling that was on the end of those bolts uh, are holding pretty good in that uh, knuckle here. So you'll have to use a use a Tanya Harding. Uh, borrow that from a, another guy on here. Drive that in all the way, both of them. Get the nut put on there. Make sure and put your big washer in there. And then uh, put your new nut on. This is staked, so when I get it tight, uh, it won't back off. This doesn't have, and the original didn't have a, a castle on it with a cotter pin. That's actually a one-time use uh, self-locking bolt. And remember, my uh, slide pin for the caliper needs to come out and be lubricated. So we're going to do that and uh, put it back together. Fellows, I don't use uh, silicone grease. I like to use this CRC caliper grease. It's a synthetic grease, and it seems like it stays with the vehicle a lot longer, where silicone grease, brake, uh, brake grease, sill glide, whatever it might be called, seems like it bakes out a lot faster. And uh, if somebody drives a vehicle where they're uh, you know, they ride 80 mile an hour all the way to the point when they're supposed to start on the brake before they even let off the gas. They're going to get in a lot more heat. And that sill glide won't last near as long. And I've done a lot of commercial truck brakes, and sill glide does not work. Do not use, uh, uh, oh, what's that silver stuff called? Uh, uh, anises. Don't use anises in here. It will not last at all. It'll dry up real quick. That's not what it's for. It's for threads. Don't use it as a as a uh, brake caliper slide pin lubricant. Uh, you'll regret it. Uh, it'll dry up and lock the pins up real quick. So use a good, uh, like I say, a CRC is not a sponsor of mine. I don't have any sponsors. They don't send me any checks, but if they want to, I'll cash them. So I'll pull that out, clean it up, put some good, not a, a whole bunch, because then the, the you'll get a hydropaction action, and, and the pen won't go in all the way because there's too much stuff in the hole. You ever had that problem? Too much stuff in the hole? Well, we don't have that problem because we don't put that much on there. And we'll put the caliper back on, tighten that nut down, uh, German torque specs, you know, good and tight, and uh, put the wheel back on, and we'll be, after we tighten those, then we'll be good to go. Guys, thanks for watching. Share, like, and subscribe. Comment if you will.